and welcome to this which is part of a series of videos I'm making on how to make reeds for shawms and for kirtles or dulcians. In this one we're going to be taking a piece of shaped cane. So this is a cane that I've shaped myself and the next video will show you how to do that because we're working our way backwards through the process. Or you can buy it from me, shaped, and this piece has not only been shaped, it's also been scored so we've got some lines cut in the bark here on the tube section and it's also been trimmed at either end to make it the right length for the reed we're going to be making which is a uh, Spanish alto reed for our Martins shawm shop instruments or for the Hanchet alto shawms as well. Now this cane has actually been uh, kept in a thing of water. It was soaked overnight originally um, and I've shaped it since then and then kept it in the water ready for this next part in the process. So it is thoroughly wet. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our mandrel and we're going to put it in my thermos cup here and I've got boiling water in here from the kettle and I've got a, a hole in the lid so that I can just leave it like that. This is a bit of a compromise. I have come across people who will happily make their reeds with a, a cold mandrel and I'm capable of doing that myself but I get a better results with a slightly warm one. At the other end of the spectrum I've come across people who actually hold the mandrel in a, a naked flame and get it up to several hundred degrees centigrade. I'm a bit worried about that as a concept. I think I'm likely to injure myself. So we've got our, our thermos there, water from the kettle, mandrel in the top and so that's going to be 80 or 90 degrees centigrade and usually by the time I've got it into the reed it's not hot enough that I can burn myself. The other thing we're going to need is some wire. This is um, Trimit's beading wire. It's a bit thinner and smaller than the um, wire that you might get from your bassoon suppliers. Um, and I use it for my shawm reeds because I find the bassoon stuff is just that bit too heavy and uh, dampens the sound a bit. So this is a little lighter weight, but it's nowhere near as thin as I buy wire, which probably wouldn't stand up to the kind of forces I like to put through it. So I've cut three pieces of that. Each piece is maybe roughly eight centimetres long. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a little over length. If it's under length you'll be irritated but this stuff is relatively cheap. You can always cut yourself some more so it's not crucial. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold my cane in half and I'm going to put the first wire on before we get the mandrel in. So I've got the wire so that I've got a long piece on the left and a short piece on the right. I like to do mine so that they twist clockwise to do up like a screw. That short piece I'm going to fold across and slightly down and then the long one is going to go across the front, round the back and across the front again. So now we've got effectively two complete bindings around the reed with the wire. Then I'm going to take those two ends and I'm going to twist. In fact, I'm going to do it by twisting the reed as well as the wire. And I'm going to get that finger tight, making sure that the wire is sitting on the bit of the cane that has the bark on. So this is the top, the first wire, and it needs to sit just below that profiling line where the tube, uh, the bark stops. I'm going to take the end off that because that's going to get in my way in a minute. So we'll just get the wire cutters and remove that and I'm going to use my pliers just to give it one more twist. Maybe two. I want this not tight but I want it snug because that helps to prevent any cracks that happen in the tube which are fine traveling upwards into the blade which is not fine. Okay, so we're going to take our hot mandrel and we're going to insert it between the two blades at the base there. You can actually do this on the table like this. And I'm going to push that all the way in until the tip of the mandrel is actually between those wires. There we go. So the top of the mandrel is now kind of on the profiling line. And I'm going to put my second wire on. This one is going to go right near the bottom. This is the one that eventually will sit underneath the Turk's head. We want our wires um, with the twisted ends alternating in direction. So there's going to be a middle one which will go the other way in a minute. This one goes the same way as your first. Exactly the same thing. Twist. 
and I'm going to get my pliers and I'm going to pull that really quite tight. So it'll take a little while. Let's get it somewhere where I want it. As long as there's plenty of slack, I'm literally just twisting. I'm not doing any pulling. That's taken it up the slack now. So I'm going to pull with the pliers and then release and twist. Pull, release and twist. Let's try a different angle. Pull, release, twist. Let's tighten this one up again as well and see where we're at with that. I'm doing this at a much more awkward angle. to the, So if I was doing this normally, I would hold it right in front of me like that. But of course you can't see it on the camera then. Let's just do one like that for the top though. Pull, release, twist. Pull, release, twist. And at the base, pull, release, twist. Okay, that's getting tight-ish. I'm going to take the, the uh, spare wire off that one. Before I put the middle wire on, I'm going to take my pliers again and I'm actually going to crush the cane around the mandrel. So this is going to help to form that nice round tube at the base. So first of all, I'm working actually below that first wire. Then I'm going to do the same thing just above it. And the heat, together with the crushing, really does get things moving in the cane. Okay, next wire goes the other way around, like I said. So my twisted bit is going to be pointing in the opposite direction to the first two. But otherwise it's pretty much the same idea. Sorry about the squeaking noise, my table seems to have developed a squeak today. Okay, so I don't really have measurements on this reed for the top wire. The top wire just sits just below the profiling line. On the bottom wire, I kind of eyeball where that goes. I imagine what the Turk's head's going to look on top of it. But this third one I have measured, it's supposed to be six millimetres down from the profiling line. So I'm going to take my ruler and have a look at that. Oh, spot on. Okay, let's tighten it further in that case if it's in the right place. Excuse me while I do it over here. And I'm now going to crush everything between those two wires. So I've done the crushing thing from the bottom of the reed up as far as the middle wire and I'm leaving the bit between the top two wires alone. Okay, a bit more excess removed there. That's basically it. One more round of tightening I think. Now as, as you get further in with the tightening you really need to be um, taking it in two steps. So you pull and when you pull, a little triangle of space should appear just at the bottom where the twist is. If that doesn't happen, it's probably as tight as it's going to go. And then having got that triangle, you can release the tension and start to twist. If you pull and twist at the same time, then you're going to break the wire. So I'm going to go. Pull, release, twist. Oh, it's broken. Good, I was going to talk about that. So if your wire does snap in this process, and it happens sometimes, it's not a problem. Just get yourself a new one. So it's the bottom one that snapped. We'll just start again. And then basically, once these are tight, all I'm going to do is to put it on a drying pin. I've got one here, which I did earlier. So this is a little metal pin, which is the same shape as the staple. If you haven't got one of these, you can use your staple, but you might want to play on it. Or you can use your mandrel, but obviously I've only got one of these. I might want to make more reeds, so these are very useful. Um, 
and you can leave that for anything between 24 hours well and as to as, as long as you like um, if the weather is cold and wet here in the UK I try to leave it at least 48 hours and sometimes it's more like a week or two the longer you leave it to dry out the more secure you can be in the knowledge that the wires are not going to move around um, and while it's drying you'll need to come back now and then and tighten these wires up again so I usually come back within a couple of hours of having done it the first time and then maybe once a day um, for the next day or two and then if I'm going to leave it longer than that I will tighten it one more time before I go on to the next stage in the process which is going to be putting the thread binding on which is the subject of the previous video so if you haven't seen that yet um, now would be a good time to go and have a look at it so I'm just going to transfer this from the mandrel to the drying pin and it can sit there and dry out. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.